What's up guys, it's James here. And in today's video, I'm gonna be answering more of your Airbnb investing related questions. I did a recent video that was similar to this one where I aggregated some of the questions that people have been asking me often about Airbnb investing, and investing in short-term rentals or vacation properties. And you guys really seem to like that. I got a lot of great feedback on that video. So I've decided to do another one. And on that note, I will likely continue this series on and do more videos like this. So if you have any questions relating to buying short-term rentals, buying vacation homes uh, or investing in Airbnbs, then just let me know in the comment section down below. And I would be more than happy to answer those questions in another upcoming video if we decide to keep this series going. Uh, also, for anyone that is interested in just sort of learning a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step playbook for how to invest successfully in short-term rental properties and build incredible cash flow and great long-term wealth through short-term rental investing, then I highly recommend checking out the, the, the training in the link in the description down below. The training is completely free and it's going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process for how to invest successfully in short-term rental properties. So again, the link for that training is in the description down below and the training is completely free. So I highly recommend that you check that out. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. Here are the questions. I've got them up on my phone here. Um, and so to start, one question I get asked often is how slash where do I find good properties? Um, so I often have people that reach out to me and they ask, you know, James, where do I find good properties or how do I find good properties? You know, where are the best deals? Um, and I'm always a little bit unsure how to answer that question because I think that most people expect me to say, oh, if you go to this website, there's a bunch of secret hidden short-term rental deals that no one knows about. And it's this, you know, great hack for finding these properties that are 50% off of list price. And that just obviously doesn't exist. Um, there's no real secret to where I find the properties. I bought properties from a multitude of different places, um, whether that's you know, looking for properties on the MLS, looking for properties on Zillow, looking for properties on even just classified sites like Craigslist and Kijiji for some good off-market deals at times. Um, or we can do flyer campaigns, all these different ways to generate off-market leads. Um, now, buying properties off-market can be a really great way to generate deal flow um, that is not going to come with a heavy premium. You know, there's even Facebook groups uh, that where people go to sell their properties, specifically their short-term rental properties, and they're there are great deals to be found there. And the nice thing about that is that you're not paying that 5% premium to have realtors involved in the deal if you're buying the property off market. Uh, but I honestly have found that buying properties on market can still work really, really well. So there's not really any kind of secret special sauce to that. You just go and find a property the way that you'd find any other property on the market. Go and look on realtor.com. You can hire a realtor even if you want to. Uh, and the thing that I found that separates short-term rental investing from long-term rental or other types of investing Investing is that we're often really just not competing with a lot of other buyers in the same way. And so that's why on market deals, you can still get an incredible return because there's so little competition in this space. Because frankly, so, so many people just don't understand that properties that we're buying can be used as a short term rental. So they're not being priced according to their short term rental income capabilities, the way that a long term rental property typically would. So no real secret there. Um, but as far as how to actually identify good properties on MLS or any other website, like that's really where the secret sauce comes in. I mean, basically is question number two there. How do I um, how do I know if a deal is good or not? Um, and that's really where the special sauce does come in because you know anyone can go and find these deals, but you need to have the right skills, the right tools, the right strategies in order to be able to identify that the property you're looking at is actually an incredible opportunity. Um, like a perfect example of this is the property that I've talked about a lot on this channel and uses a great case study. Um, that property that is now trending towards doing about $150,000 per year on Airbnb, um, that property sat, sat on the open market on MLS for over 60 days with only one offer. So, you know, so many people saw that property, saw the opportunity there, um, but just didn't, well, I guess, didn't see the opportunity there. They saw the property, they just didn't see the opportunity there to use it as a short-term rental and it sat without being sold. Um, so how do you know that a deal is a, is a good one? I think that's the exact wording. How do I know if a deal is a good one or not? Really, that comes down to analysis. You need to, number one, have the right tools for analysis. So for us, um, I've got another video coming out on the channel here that's gonna go you and actually allow you to watch me analyze properties in real time and analyze a property right start to finish. Now that spreadsheet that I use, our short-term rental analysis calculator, that is my kind of holy grail for analyzing properties. That combined with AirDNA, using that to 
can grab data for how a property can perform, give good projections, um, and just you know being able to run a good analysis and figure out how well the property actually will perform uh, relative to how much it actually costs. That's the kind of secret sauce right there. And again, if you want to learn more about uh, that specific step-by-step -step process, if you want to actually get your hands on that tool that we use for running our calculations, then again, link in the description down below to that free training that's going to walk you through all that in much more detail. Next question is, can I get financing on a short-term rental property? That's a really good question, and I get that one coming up a lot. And that was one, one of the things that I was really curious about and unsure about when I first started getting into investing in short-term rentals. Um, because you know a lot of people have probably heard that getting financing on short-term rentals is quite different from getting financing on a long-term rental or even on your primary residence uh, because it's an income property, but an income property where the income isn't really counted by a lot of major banks. They don't really take into consideration a lot of time your short-term rental income. So it definitely is a different can of worms. Again, this is a very, very kind of complex. There's a lot of different options as far as financing your properties. So um, for like kind of the best tailored solution after that training video, if you do end up checking that out in the description down below, um, you can actually set up a free, completely free one-on-one -on -one strategy call with my business partner, Riley. We're doing that for a very limited time for obvious reasons. Um, and in that, Riley will to kind of walk you through the different options that are available to you specifically and what makes the most sense. But at a high level, let's go through it here. Um, you know, traditional lenders, are they going to lend to you the exact same way that they would on a long-term rental? No, they're not. Um, can you get financing on a short-term rental property? Absolutely. In fact, in some cases, you can actually get financing based on the projected short-term rental income and not actually need any personal income verification at all in order to qualify for the loan. So you're not actually guaranteeing it personally they're not using your income at all to, to qualify you for the loan. It's just based on the projected annual income of the property um, from Airbnb and short-term rental. So you can definitely get lending. There's also alternative ways to get lending outside of that, but um, I guess the, the kind of crux of it is, yes, lending options are definitely available for short-term rental and can be really, really good. How do I do this and have it be passive is another question I get asked quite often. Meaning, you know, how do I actually buy these properties, make these investments, and have it be more of a passive investment as opposed to an active investment? Because I think a lot of people have it in their heads that if they invest in short-term rentals, that's going to be another part-time job or another full-time job. And I think that's why people generally shy away from short-term rental investing as opposed to a long-term rental investing where they see it as a lot more passive because you just get one tenant, set it, and forget it for the most part. Um, and that's valid. If you don't put any systems or structures in place, then investing in short-term rentals is probably not going to be for you if you want something passive. If you do put structures and systems in place, you can absolutely make it passive. And I put together an entire video on how I'm able to manage my property that's bringing in over $150,000 a year um, in just about two hours a month. So that's a whole other video on this channel. I'd highly recommend you check that out for a more detailed, in-depth answer. But I guess, um, yes, you absolutely can uh, make this really passive as far as, and when I say this, I mean investing in short-term rental properties. How do you do that you just put the right systems and structures and team members in place and that is going to eat into gross numbers a bit but ultimately it's still going to be like we're easily doing 3x what we would do as a, on a long-term rental property even after taking into consideration all of our costs on the property so um, the numbers are just a total no-brainer last question I'm going to get to here is um, how do you make sure your property stay booked um, yeah so I think a lot of people are concerned that hey you know if I get this property how do I make sure that it actually stays booked um, and and then that kind of ties in as well to the previous question of like, is that going to be a lot of work to make sure that it stays booked? Um, and again, I've got a, a whole other video on this channel that walks through our what's called our target occupancy rate tracking spreadsheet. That's what we use for optimizing our performance on properties and making sure that we make the right the, the necessary adjustments to pricing, whether that's increasing pricing because we're overbooked or decreasing pricing because we're uh, we're underbooked. Whatever the adjustment is, that tool makes it very very streamlined and simple. Um, and I and I actually shared another video as well when I was doing that myself. That was the last thing that I just finished outsourcing for this property. And when I was doing that myself, it was taking about 20 minutes a week. So that's an extra hour and 20 minutes per month. And so really, it just doesn't take a lot of time at all to do that yourself. If you do decide to outsource it, then it's just one more thing that you, that you end up outsourcing. But really, it doesn't take a lot of time and you can absolutely get really great results with it. But you need to have that data driven pricing strategy. The mistake I see most people making with short term rentals is that they don't know how to price their property. They don't have any tools. They're basically just guessing and they're basically just kind of using their 
best guess to figure out what their pricing should be, if they should lower it, if they should raise it. Um, and when you do it that way, I find that you're also often always just kind of stressing about it and wondering and worrying because you don't know if you're on track or not because you don't have a formula to figure that out. Um, so for us, we just use this very data-driven strategy to figure it out. Uh, it works incredibly well. It's had our property perform in the top 90th percentile of the market. Uh, and yeah, it, I mean, it takes 20 minutes a week, so you can't get much better than that. Um, so that's all the questions we're gonna get to in this video. Like I said, if you have any additional questions uh, that you wanna have answered in an upcoming video, then just let me know in the comment section down below. If you liked this video, if you got value from it, please take a quick second, hit that like button, give me a thumbs up on the video. It really does help me out tremendously with YouTube's algorithm and with helping to grow this channel. Um, and then also, if you are interested in, like I said, the step-by-step-by-step -step -by -step playbook for exactly how to invest successfully in short-term rental properties and build massive cash flow and long-term wealth with this investing strategy, then and I highly recommend you check out the link in the description down below for that free training that's gonna walk you through everything. It's gonna give you access to some tools, some templates. It's also gonna give you the opportunity to set up a free one-on-one -on -one strategy session with my business and investing partner, Riley, where he can go through a tailored plan of attack to get you on the right track towards hitting your goals with investing in short-term rentals. That's all for today, folks. If you like the video, again, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.